Unified with Momobo Ogoro on News Talk. Welcome to Unified. This show is where we listen, learn, and laugh and unify across our differences. My name is Momoba Ogoro. I am a social psychologist and founder of GERM. And coming up on the show today, we will be chatting about the Olympics and sports inclusion. And our panel will be discussing how we can be more inclusive when it comes to sport. In What's Your Story, we'll meet the spoken word artist Dagogo Hart, who'll be sharing about his story and how he uses his heritage to inform his art. And lastly, on the social scene, we'll be talking about how we can make festivals more inclusive when it comes to people who are neurodiverse. First, we're talking about the Olympics, and it's just kicked off at the moment. And we'll be discussing representation, diversity, and inclusivity in sport, and the challenges that are faced in understanding discrimination in the sports industry. So I'm joined today by Neve Talon, the founder of Her Sport, Amina Mustafa, Sports Against Racism Ireland Development Director, and Famida Nahid, who works with Doris on the EU-funded project Salam, Sustainable Alliance Against Anti-Muslim Hate, and Combating Racism in and Through Sports in the SCORE Project, Supporting Cities Opposing Racism in Europe. Hi, everyone. How are we doing today? Hello. Hi. 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 Hi, everyone. So when it comes to kind of understanding discrimination in sports, sport is like a huge, huge, huge topic. And when it comes to the Olympics, why is this topic so important, particularly in this area? And why people need to start understanding that we need to be inclusive in this area. I'd like to start with you, Neve. Why is this so important in the work that you do? No pressure. Um, in terms of the Olympic Games, and, and for me, we do a lot of focus on the Paralympic Games as well. Um, you know, we're seeing representation um, across the board from from as many countries as, as we can possibly see, you know, in terms of putting forward athletes to to compete and um, I suppose be the best that they can be on, on the world stage. Um, I think one of the nice things about the Olympic Games is that there's always this um, effort to include countries across the world um, where maybe there's not as much investment in, in sport or, you know, development of, of, of certain sports that, that there are opportunities for people to qualify and, um, you know, to, to represent their their country at the at the highest level. So you will see, um, I suppose, yeah, different um, athletes coming forward to, to represent their country. So. As an example, I suppose, um, in the rowing in Tokyo, um, we would have had um, Sunita Pushpore rowing for Ireland in the women's single. Um, and something that you would have seen across the across the heats was that there was um, actually quite a span, I suppose, of levels. But through the way that the qualification process works, um, there is that opportunity for people to come and to gain experience and, and, and to be um, part of that like worldwide show of competition and while there will be people there trying to obviously be the best and, and claim those medals there are also those pathways for people to co- to qualify through um you know their the specific geographies and that so um you'll see people qualifying through things like Asian games you'll see European championships world championships and that type of thing but um it is I suppose trying to put forward that opportunity for maybe countries as I said earlier that don't have as much investment um, in sports to, to have their athletes there representing and participating in, in, in what is a global competition. Um, for us, I suppose, from a her sport perspective, um, this year is an exciting year as we are you know participating in Paris. It's the, the first year that we will have equal gender representation um, at the Olympic Games. It's 100 years since the, since the Games has, has been in Paris and you know the, the strides that we have, have made across those 100 years and, and then obviously from the, the Olympics that preceded that. Um, is is great and um, another thing that I saw um, that is I suppose a, an accommodation for for women is that um, Alison Felix, former um, US sprinter, um, is going to be working with Pampers actually um, to have a nursery um, for women that have their have their children that are there with them as well. So there will be some uh, athletes that are th- they're top of their game, but they might have a two year old and and it's it's allowing that kind of support. So um, I suppose continuously. Uh, looking for strides to be made um, for women in sport is, is something that we would be pushing all the time. That is huge strides. And I didn't know that in terms of the, the, the partnership with Pampers and the accommodations that's made for parents. Because like, you would imagine that a lot of athletes are parents and they're working as well as raising their own kids as well. So it's amazing to hear that not only do we have that equal gender representation in, in, in the Olympics this year, but there also, there's also that accommodation as well. And moving on to you, Amina, in terms of the work that Sari does, how do you think it's going to apply in terms of even with the games and how we can actually be more inclusive in terms of combating racism in sports? Well, the work of Sari um, or Sport Against Racism Ireland looks at using sport um, as a way of bringing people together. Um, so sport for social inclusion. 
Um, but alongside that, it's using sport as a non-formal learning tool to address social issues such as racism and discrimination. Um, I think it's important to, to point out that sport doesn't exist within a vacuum. Um, it's a microcosm of wider society. Um, so if there is social issues, um, it can perpetuate or challenge um, uh, existing issues within society. Uh, this year in Paris, um, we actually have a team going over um, for an event that's running alongside the Olympics. It's called Festival 24 and it's run by a sports NGO, Sport Don La Vie. Um, and it's bringing together um, young people that aren't competing at an elite level, but really um, participating in sport um, in a social, non-formal setting um, to come together and celebrate diversity and inclusion um, and feel like they're part of the, the Olympic um, Games. Um, and I think for for us at the organisation, it's great to see diverse representation um, going over to uh, the Olympics. Um, you know, uh, it's great to celebrate the the success of the Ireland and the Irish team. We've had um, two national records, particularly in, in athletics. So um, we've quite a number of people that come from an area um, where Rashida grew up. So we have young people that are celebrating um, the success of someone from their local community. Um, but really, as um, Neve mentioned, it's great to see representation um, at elite level and hopefully that boosts sports participation at all levels of civil society. That representation is super important. And like you said, in terms of young people, just even seeing themselves being represented and putting themselves forward in that area is super important for them to even participate first and foremost, particularly when they come from a different background or even when they're, they're women as well, because I know the, the participation for young women in sports is is quite low. And I know, Famita, yourself, you work in the area of, of combating discrimination and hate on, on a systemic level. And when it comes to um, even, not even the athletes themselves, but people's perception of the of the athletes and them participating in sports, there's a, there's a different story uh, that's being painted uh, particularly. So I'd love to know from your experience and from your perspective, what can be done for a, on a wider systemic level for us to kind of combat, let's say, discrimination in the sports field? Yeah, uh, thank you for your question. The thing is, you know, we have to really oversee um, uh, from the outer look as well as internally, you know, we need to develop some mechanism where we understand what the sports or the purpose of the sports is. What are the grounds, you know, on which we are playing the sports? Um, is sports is only the competition or whether we have the sense of the cooperation, we know that the sport can play a role in. Um, whether we guarantee the respect of human rights, equality, diversity, uh, to the sports, do we also are able to apply the whole model of the social cohesion when we're playing the sport? So it's it's not only you know having a small game or or having a few hours played on the ground, but actually we are promoting a culture where we are all engaging um on from the from the very grassroots community levels to to the local, national, and then of course you know, the, when we talk about the Olympics, it's, we are talking about the international levels. So we are certainly showing that you know what kind of culture. Uh, culture understanding or practices we have in our in our in our grassroots levels, which are being portrayed from local to the national level, and and then of course international level. Of course, you know there are some certain ways which uh, which are important to address when we're talking about the sports. You know we need to have a policy. You know where we have everything taken seriously in terms of um, the victim of racism in sports or, or the victim centered you know um, kind of um, initiatives. We need that. You know the, the, whatever the incidents happen, they should be recorded. They, they should be told in very, very serious and sophisticated manner. Also, we are uh, want that, you know, the con the concept of the awareness and the communication and um, interconnection uh, and the dialogue through sports. That is also very, very vital uh, when we talk about, about uh, the inclusive sport. And of course, you know, uh, equally it is important that we have that umbrella of, of, of the governance where we see that the issue is being seriously taken and there are some proce procedures in place in writing, black and white, and the, the whole of the team, uh, including um, the organizations, unions, club associations, individuals, they are being trained to understand the whole um, concept behind um, this, you know, even if it's a digital abuse against athletes, whether they are the minor or microaggressions which are happening on the sports ground or even off the sports ground where we are being training them. Um, and, and also, you know, in our societal level, when we're talking about, you know, what is happening. Uh, it's not only the sport um, person themselves or the individuals, but also you know everyone is held responsible, and and we have to really assess the the impact of 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 these incidents which happen, 
And just like, you know, we'll be talking about the Russia debt, the whole of the family, how it suffers as a result, you know, how the, the African communities, they are seeing it, how the black communities, they are seeing it. And also, um, because of that, you know, the rest of the ethnic minorities and the communities who are living in Ireland, how they perceive, you know, as a parent that one they are in this, like, part of the time, I ask question, you know, to myself, you know, my children, they are playing, you know, what will happen to them, you know? What are uh, what what kind of the seriousness you know is 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 evolving around that you know chapter of of um, the racism in sports and of course you know we have seen like you know in, in Ireland especially with with all that demographic changes um, and we need that you know that diversity should be reflected in sports whether it's about um, the woman representation people from and disability backgrounds people from ethnic minorities and of course you know once these individuals they go and represent. They are representing the Ireland, you know, the whole of the philosophy of education and the sports uh, and an inclusive city um, as, as a policy for Ireland, you know, they're representing it. So there is something, you know, which we, which is a matter of our own, you know, um, international and national pride, which we reflect uh, through the sport. So there's a huge thing, you know, which needs we need to talk and address, you know, when we talk into this big issue. Thank you, Samida. And I think one thing that you mentioned that was really important is that sort of like the local challenges that are being faced by certain communities and being faced by people who want to participate or potentially want to participate in sport. And Neve, can you kind of, ex I know you work a lot in her sport, you work a lot with young women and girls who want to participate in sport and eventually be on that international Olymp Olympic sta stage, but there are certain challenges that are being faced. Can you kind of explain a bit about that? Yeah, I suppose, um, you know, some people have, have dreams of going to the Olympic Games, but then from the sports perspective, like, you know, playing at, at social level and non-competitive level is, is, is something that we encourage and welcome as well. Like, there's, there's so much that you can get out of sport beyond, I suppose, winning and losing. Um, from our perspective, um, one of the things that we would talk about a lot is one in two girls drop out of sport by the age of 20. Um, so that's obviously a, a, a significant drop off, um, I suppose, to compare it maybe to, to young boys. Um, we see that one in five um, girls drop out of sport between um, primary school and secondary school um, versus one in 20 boys between primary and secondary school. So we're seeing quite a significant difference even even at that age. Um, why is sport important? As I said, it's, it's, it's much more um, than about winning and losing. You know, there's so much more to sport. We're talking about community. Um, we're talking about socialisation. We're talking about personal and professional development skills. Um, you know, while someone maybe doesn't integrate as as, as well at school, um, you know, they, they might use something like theatre or dance or music or sport and, and that can be where they find the people that they relate to most and, and ways of expressing themselves as well. Like um, for me, I did I did try ballet and I tried stage school and that kind of stuff and it, it, it wasn't really where I was most comfortable um, and, and sport was something that I was I was very comfortable in. So you're trying to, I suppose, give kids and people the option to find I suppose the space that they're they're most comfortable in and and then to flourish and and, and develop into into being adults um from the the professional perspective um 94 percent of women in executive managerial positions have a background in sport so if we're talking about one in two girls dropping out of sport by the age of 20 think about the 50 percent of girls that are dropping out that then aren't going on um, with that experience, with the skills that they're developing um, to, to go on and be, you know, potentially successful in, in, in their future careers and in whatever that might be. So we'd be looking at things like teamwork, communication, leadership, resilience, like the ability to win and to lose. And, and you know, if you win, to be, uh, you know, graceful in your in your win, to know how to accept a win and um, I suppose move on from that. Like I've, I've listened to athletes that say, you know, they actually think about losing maybe more than winning and don't know how to react when, when you do win. Um, but then equally, you know, there's always going to be losses, whether that's in sport or in life, and, and you have to be able to pick yourself up and, and, and go again. And that's something hugely that, that sport can teach you as well. So there's so many skills there. And, and, and I suppose that's where that's where we see the benefits in it. That, it, that statistic does not relate to people that have gone and, and competed at an international level. Um, you know, they're developing skills at, at, at local and club level. They're developing it, developing it through Gaelic games, through lacrosse, through badminton, through swimming, like whatever it is, you're going to get so much expo exposure to those types of skills there. So, um, you know, and then, then leaning into that, you obviously have your, you know, physical and, and mental health benefits as well that have, have all been proven too. So, um, yeah, that that's really, you know, why, why we're doing the work that we're doing. We're trying to showcase and role model as many girls and women in sport across as many sports as possible. Um, from that social 